Hello. Uh, a few videos back I tested this uh, JGY 370 uh, motor and gearbox and um, devised some software algorithms for driving it satisfactorily. The big problem with this unit is that the motor is a brushed motor and therefore is almost certainly going to wear out. And I also had to use a shaft encoder to control it, this thing down here, uh, and that costs £52 by itself. The motor itself and the motor and the gearbox only cost about £8. So um, uh, I've been looking for other alternatives and I've come up with this thing, which is an 11HS12 hyphen. 0674D1 hyphen PG27 or in other words it's a NEMA 11 stepper motor the black bit uh, connected to a planetary gearbox with a 27 to 1 reduction ratio or to be precise 26.85 to 1 reduction ratio so 26.85 revs here uh, produce one rev on the output shaft here. And I've been testing that and that's what this video is going to be about. The two units are very much of the same size but this one is much heavier. That's 204 grams. This unit is much better constructed than the uh, JGY 370. It has nicely machined surfaces. Everything is screwed together with bolts. And uh, generally speaking, it gives the impression of being well engineered. But of course, as always in life, you get what you pay for. This unit costs 38 quid. The JGY 370 only costs about eight pounds. Although the vendor gives a, a warning here to say that uh, they can't guarantee that the backlash will be any less than one degree, in fact on the output shaft I couldn't uh, feel any backlash at all. It's a standard bipolar stepper motor with a 1.8 degree step angle giving 200 steps round the circle and uh, each phase is rated at 0.67 amps and has a resistance of 5.6 ohms. So if you multiply those two together you get 3.8 volts so you could run this motor at 3.8 volts at full current so long as you didn't step it too fast. They say the recommended voltage is 12 to 24 volts but I'm going to be running it at 5 volts probably. Um, the configuration is absolutely standard with two coils. I'm driving the motor with this DRV8834 card um, with the micromite over here. Uh, basically every time you output a 0-1 transition on the step line then the uh, DRV8834 drives the motor around by one step. Um, and there's a uh, direction control which, which you can use to reverse uh, the direction. Um, there's a pot here where you can set the current limit and I've set it to 0.67 amps which is the maximum current, the maximum the motor is rated for. And I'm using it in full step mode. There is also an enable uh, control here which I'm driving from the Micromite. Uh, when the 8834 is disabled using this control then it, it applies no power to the motor but continues to interface with the microcontroller uh, in the normal way. So uh, I'm using this control after I've moved the step, stepper motor to where I want it to uh, to turn off the holding current on the stepper motor because that current is 500 milliamps at 5 volts and I really can't afford to have it going on like that. There's no need given that the planetary gear is it has so much reduction that the output shaft is not going to be moved uh, by an external force anyway. Right, so the circuit is fully powered up now uh, and the motor is uh, being uh, driven at 5 volts 
and the total current to the motor and the motor driver card, but not counting the micromite, is 3 milliamps at the moment because I've got the driver card disabled. If I were, and I can easily turn the uh, stepper motor because it's just uh, free. If I were to disable, to remove the disabling, you see that the holding current is 480 milliamps and I can't actually turn the stepper motor by hand. So I'll just, oops, I'll just re-enable that. And if I run a test program, this is stepping the motor at 20 steps a second. And now it's stepping it at 120 steps a second. You can see that the current is slightly less. That's 220 steps a second. Three twenty steps. Four twenty steps a second. Five twenty steps a second. Six twenty steps a second. You notice that the current is going down as the number, as the speed of the steps goes up. That's 720 steps a second. 820 steps a second. 920 steps a second. 1020 steps a second. Now the current is almost within a reasonable bounds. 1120. This is about the speed I would walk, want to drive this thing. It's taking 200 milliamps when moving. That's 1220 steps a second. Now we're getting into the region where it's going to start to fail. That's 1320 steps a second. 1420 steps a second. 1520 steps a second. It's not actually working correctly now. The reason the current goes down as the step frequency goes up is because of the inductance in the coils. Uh, it takes time for the current to build up so that if you wanted to drive the thing at full current at a high step rate you'd need to use a higher voltage which I'm not doing uh, because I, I don't need to do that. So I plotted uh, these results. The blue line is with a motor uh, voltage of 5 volts. Um, I'm not quite sure what this kink is about here, but it seems to be present in all three curves. Uh, the, we, I also did it at, at the green line at 3.8 volts uh, motor supply and also at 9 volts. Um, and the conclusion I drew from this is that for my purposes uh, driving the motor at around this region here about 1100 uh, steps a second would be good because it is short of the point where the motor stops working satisfactorily because the current uh, has not uh, risen to a high enough value and at the same time it is uh, uh, relatively low uh, current compared with driving it at a slower speed. So that's what I intend to do if using this uh, to drive uh, the rudder. So uh, imagine this is the rudder at its central position. I'll just run the test program. This is running at 1136 steps a second and making random rudder movements and reporting on the screen. The right hand figure is the time for each movement um, and on average uh, it moves 60 degrees in 
0.788 seconds which means it's about eight times slower than a brushless Savox server uh, or maybe four times slower than, a, than a, an ordinary analog server. Um, my feeling is that this would be acceptable but that probably what I need to do is to get the other version of this planetary gearbox which has a reduction ratio of 5 to 1 rather than uh, 27 to 1. That would make it run five and a half times faster uh, which although it would take exactly the same current it, the current would be flowing for uh, a fifth of the time and so the uh, milliampere hours that uh, would be consumed by the servo running on a 5 to 1 reduction gearbox would be five times less than running on a 27 to 1 reduction gearbox. So the question is whether, whether, whether with a 5 to 1 reduction ratio the servo torque would be adequate um, for our needs and I will uh, I've ordered the 5 to 1 one and we will, we will see in due course. So I'm thinking at the moment that this uh, stepper motor with planetary gearbox is going to be a much better more reliable solution uh, than this JGY370 that I tried before. Um, a big question is whether the planetary gearbox will survive long enough. I haven't opened it yet I'm not quite sure what it looks like inside I don't know how much lubrication or what kind of lubrication it's got, but uh, I shall probably put this unit and the JGY on a long-term test in my garage and we'll see what comes out of that. One other thing I should say about this stepper motor is that uh, I don't need to use a shaft encoder with it because one can simply count steps, but on the other hand um, when the software is started it has no idea where the stepper motor is uh, or and where the output shaft is so I, I need a, a sensor on the output shaft to, to tell either where the central position is or where the two uh, extreme positions are so that the uh, software can get its bearings as it were and start counting from a known position so I shall probably put an arm with maybe a photoelectric or hall effect sensor on it to perform that function. Thanks for watching.